good stuff. Um, I have an eternal sweet tooth, so this video was like, you know, necessary. Um, I've kind of collected a few healthy recipes over the past few years that have helped me maintain a healthy lifestyle, so I thought I definitely need to share them with you. Some of them are already on my blog, so I'll link them below, um, but I just wanted you to see, you know, them being made and, you know, what it looks like, so you can always nail the recipe every time. All the recipes will still be in the comments below as well, but yeah, let me know which one's your favourite one. Thank you for watching in advance, and happy cooking. So up first is a super simple chocolatey dessert recipe that's great to have at a dinner party. We're making a chocolate and strawberry pudding. First you need two large ripe avocados, strawberries, honey, some high quality cocoa powder, some vanilla stevia drops which are optional and some unsweetened almond milk. You're going to start by prepping your avocado so all you need to do is just slice it down the middle and scoop out your centres. I'm using two large ripe avocados so make sure you just give your avocados a bit of a squeeze to see that they're nice and ripe and ready, raring to go. So scoop out your avocados and add them into your Nutribullet cup or your mini food processor or whatever you have at home. Mash them down so you've got plenty of room to add more ingredients. And then you're going to add in your fresh strawberries. I'm using about 200 grams of strawberries, um, but if you want all the exact measurements for every ingredient, I will be putting all the recipes in full in the information box below. So then I've added in some cocoa powder, some honey to add a little bit of extra sweetness, and then I'm adding in a splash of almond milk to get that really good pudding consistency. I'm eyeballing it, but it's about a quarter of a cup to a third of a cup. Shake that all together, add it to your blender or your Nutribullet, and just start blending till you get a really nice thick pudding consistency. Now I'm, you can see I'm adding in some stevia drops right now, this is optional but it adds a little bit of extra sweetness. I top it with strawberries, cacao nibs and chock shot and that is your pudding ready and raring to go. Like I said before this is great for a dinner party and the best thing is you can store it in the fridge and keep it for a couple of days more so enjoy. And now we're moving on to some healthy baking. I have made this banana bread countless of times. I've shared the recipe with you on my blog and you guys have loved it, but today I'm showing you a bit of a twist. So you're going to need two ripe bananas, two large eggs, coconut oil, some coconut flour, some sucrin gold, which is a brown sugar alternative, great for baking, some porridge oats, some cinnamon, baking powder, and fresh blueberries. This cake is so simple to make, it's pretty much an all-in-one method, bar the blueberries which you leave until the end. But you're going to start by adding in some ripe banana into a large mixing bowl. Once you've added those, you're going to add in your two eggs. This recipe requires that we have oat flour, so I make that by simply blending up my Nutribullet. I'm adding in that to the bowl, along with the coconut flour, which is about half a cup. Then we're adding in a third of a cup of the sucrine gold, which is that brown sugar alternative. I'm adding in some melted coconut oil, some cinnamon. Then you add in your almond milk, which you'll notice you'll need a lot in this recipe as coconut flour tends to absorb a lot of liquid, so you'll probably need to add a bit more later. Start beating this together with a wooden, wooden spoon before getting in there with the electric blenders and getting a nice thick and creamy cake mix ready for your tin. So this is the consistency you want, but if it looks a little bit dry, add in a splash more almond milk. And for the last step, stir in your fresh blueberries into the batter carefully with a wooden spoon. Then it's time to line your loaf tin with some greaseproof paper. Now I always make a bit of a mess of this, but I get it done. However, I would re totally recommend buying loaf tin liners, but I wanted to show you my attempt at making my own. It is quite simple to do. As you can see, once you pour that cake batter in, it's going to weigh the liner down anyway. And just make sure it's nice and spread evenly so you get a nice even bake. So this is the cake spread nice and evenly, ready to go into the oven. You're going to pop it in the oven for about 20 minutes on the top shelf. And it should come out like this, nice and golden brown around the edges. A knife should come out nice and clean. And you should see those blueberries have started to melt. So, so delicious. I recommend serving this with some Greek yogurt or nut butter or even both and you'll be more than satisfied. On to what might be one of my favourite, favourite treat desserts. I love this. This is a healthy cookie dough. Yes, this exists and I'm telling you now, to me this tastes better than the real thing. You'll need some almond flour, an egg, some squeezy honey, some sucrine gold again, baking powder, coconut oil, some unsweetened almond milk, 
vanilla stevia drops which are always optional and 70% dark chocolate chips so you need to start by melting your coconut oil in a Pyrex jug so I'm using two large tablespoons of coconut oil to melt the coconut oil I'm popping it in a Pyrex jug and I microwave it for about 45 seconds then I'm adding in the runny honey and I'm just whisking them together as a nice wet ingredient to add into the cookie dough so take your large mixing bowl and add in the almond flour you're going to add in your baking powder and you're going to add in your sucrine gold as well and combine all of that together so now it's time to start adding the wet ingredients to your dough that's the honey and coconut oil mix then you're going to add in your egg I am using vanilla stevia to slightly sweeten and add that vanilla flavour but you could use vanilla extract too and then adding in the almond milk which is going to get that doughy texture so now's the fun part grab your wooden spoon and stir it all together to get a really nice doughy consistency it's at this point that you stir in the dark chocolate chips and just yeah use a wooden spoon and make sure they're all nice and thoroughly combined Pour the dough into your oven proof dish. I'm using about, I think this is a seven inch Le Creuset dish, but you could use a bigger one or like a brownie tin, that would work as well. I left quite a large clip of me pouring the dough into the dish, just purely for the fact that it just looks so good. And trust me, the raw dough on its own, I think tastes really, really good. Um, so you're gonna spread it evenly with a wooden spoon and make sure it's nice and smooth. And once that's done, you're going to pop the dough into the oven for about 12 to 15 minutes. Keep an eye on it. You want it to be nice and brown around the edges and then quite a little bit raw in the middle because I like this to be half cooked. If you wanted it cooked more, I would suggest putting it in the oven a little bit longer. This is great, served warm, fresh out of the oven and I love putting it with like oppo salted caramel ice cream or like Greek yogurt again. It's so, so, so tasty. And for our fourth and final recipe today, we're making one of the classics, a really nice apple and blackberry crumble. So you're going to need three large Bramley apples, some fresh blackberries, oats which will turn into oat flour like we did with the last recipe, sucrine gold, again, this is a key feature of today's baking episode, cinnamon, coconut oil, almond milk. So you're going to start by peeling your Bramley apples, um, just make sure they're nice peeled, quartered and diced so you've got them in nice small chunks ready to pop in a pan. Use a medium sized pan and add in a bit of water, I use about half a cup of water. I like to add in cinnamon but that's totally optional and I'm adding in some more sucre and gold to sweeten the apples because these are just a little bit tart. Um, I used uh, three large apples so I used about one spoonful of sucre and gold per apple. That seemed to work really really well. So pop the lid on and leave it for about 8 to 10 minutes and you should have this nice stewed fruit where it's not 100% stewed. So now we're making the topping. So you need some oat flour, so we're going to do exactly the same process that we did before, grinding up the oats in the Nutribullet. Add in your sucre and gold to a large mixing bowl. We're adding in the coconut flour, um, which would be subbing the butter that you'd have in the traditional recipe. I've also added a bit of cinnamon there because that's my personal taste, but you might like something different. Now you'll start to get this kind of mixture and to sweeten it a little bit more and to get a better um, crumbled topping, add in a bit of honey as well and as long with some almond milk for some wet ingredients so the oats and everything starts to bind together a bit more. Um, I just use a wooden spoon for this, stir it together and this got the perfect consistency I want. I want it to start getting a little bit lumpy. So the crumble topping's done, now it's time to assemble your crumble. So you're going to start by adding all the fruit. So I'm adding in the stewed apples first, followed by the fresh blackberries, which I'm going to stir in as well and combine them all. So they're nice and evenly spread throughout the crumble. Now it's time to add your topping. So just with a wooden spoon, carefully guide in the crumble topping on top, spread evenly so it has a like, nice even thickness to it and then pat it down with your wooden spoon so it all sits nicely in place and you've got an even distribution of crumble and fruit. I'm also adding the addition of some Rude Health muesli on top, this is totally up to you, but you might like to add some seeds or nuts on top, whatever you fancy. I like this because it has some nuts and seeds in it, just gives a little bit of extra crunch, a little bit of extra texture, and then that's all ready to go into the oven. I like to pop it in about the top shelf at about 180 degrees for 20 minutes or so, but keep an eye on it. 
And voila, your crumble is ready. This Sunday favourite has been transformed into a recipe that everyone's still going to love, but it's going to be so much better for them. So if you did like any of these recipes and you want to make them at home, all the recipes are going to be in the info box for you. Thank you so much.